So the first app we're going to talk about is called Samsung's Keys Cafe. And I honestly think this is one of the coolest apps made by Samsung. With this app, you can customize the look and feel of your keyboard and change just about anything about it. As you can see, I have this cool chroma thing going on, this RGB style keyboard. So you can access the Keys Cafe from the Samsung GoodLock app. And when you open it up, you can choose a theme. There's tons of themes to choose from. I just like to pick one, see how it looks and customize it. Furthermore, you can change the effects of that theme. So I can go in and change the color effects. And from there, I can choose how I want the pop-ups or the, the ripples to happen on the keyboard and the individual keys popping up. And I can also change the overall color theme as well. So I like to use this rainbow spiral theme to give it a kind of chroma, sort of reminds me of a Razer keyboard look. Now, if that's not enough for you, you can even further customize the individual keys on a keyboard. So you can go in and edit the keyboard so that let's say you want, you know, one key to be longer in width or higher in height, you can go and you can change that. Or if you want the secondary key to be an emoji rather than a pound symbol, you can go and change that. Like I said, with Samsung Keys Cafe, there is so much you can change. This, this app is insane and I'm honestly surprised there isn't more hype about this. One of definitely one of the coolest apps made by Samsung. So the second app we're going to talk about is called Samsung Sound Assistant. And this app is honestly the ultimate go-to tool that you need for customizing and making your sound better. With this app, you can customize the look and feel of the sound panel. So for example, here's my default Samsung sound panel. Not that interesting. But if I go and turn on this option, I now have more options within my sound panel, including adjusting the individual volumes for media, ringtone, and alarms. And I can even go and open up a mixer setting. So I can go and adjust the equalizer settings, you know, adjust the bass or treble. I can save these as a preset and load them whenever I need to. And I can also easily toggle Dolby Atmosphere on and off. This is honestly super convenient to have and actually really cool. Now, furthermore, you can change the layout, whether or not the panel appears on the right side of your screen or the left side of the screen. And you can also go and adjust the color. So if you don't want the boring stock sense and color, you can choose something a little more vivid like blue or green and just to have a more customized panel. So the next thing about Sound Assistant I love is this feature to add individual app volumes. So with this, you can customize the maximum volume for each individual app. So let's say for YouTube, I adjust the volume to something a little bit less, let's say like 20%. Now you can watch if I go into the YouTube app and try to trump the volume, it's not gonna get as loud as what it would. Now if I go back and adjust that back to 100%, now you can see the volume does Johnny get as loud as what it would uh, normally. Johnny, knock knock. Here comes the cock. So like I said, it's a cool feature. You know, I mean, it's something nice to have definitely for apps that have loud volume and it's something cool to toggle. Now another cool thing to do is change the set volume. So if you don't like the 10 increments, you can change it down to four, three or one increments. I just keep it at 10, but it's something nice to do. And you can also go and customize your vibration patterns and create your own vibration patterns. These are things that are cool. I just don't do them often to take a lot of work, but it's nice to have that functionality. Um, but now this, we got to talk about this, the multi sound feature. So this allows you to play two sounds at the same time. So I can have my podcast playing and my music app playing or more realistically, I can have my podcast and Google maps playing and they won't stop each other. Wait for ketones to rise to a certain amount because one of the mechanisms that people suggest that feature is amazing because that allows me to have my podcast playing and my Google Maps playing at the same time. Now, there's also other features that you can customize within the sound assistant. Like there's lots of EQ stuff you can do and adjust whatever sounds best to you. There's even a feature to find the best sound overall for your ears. And finally, there's some advanced options that you can talk about as well. I never found a use for these, but just know that they're there. Like for example, using mono audio or switching your right and left uh, speaker outputs 
All these are really cool to have, and it's honestly what makes the sound assistant such a useful tool to have on your Samsung phone. So next, let's talk about the Galaxy Labs. So this is a little newer, and these are a collection of apps that allow you to kind of enhance one UI. So this first one is the battery tracker. Now, I'm gonna be honest, this doesn't really offer that much right now that you won't find in One UI 3. So if you are on One UI 3 or 3.1, you, you're probably gonna have all the features you'll see here. Um, but like the battery tracker, it kind of shows me the same thing. I think the cool thing is that the graph is a little bit better. It gives me a little more granular detail, but not still not a lot. And I can see like the past seven days. So I don't know if I will use this so much over the normal battery graph, but it's still nice to have as a functionality. The next one is the battery guardian. And like before, like the battery tracker, we have most of these features within One UI 3.1. The one that I think is kind of cool though is the bedtime functionality and that allows you to save power during bedtime. So I imagine when you toggle that, it probably turns off sync during certain hours and probably wakes up your phone less. Um, some combination of doing that, I would imagine. So I have yet to try that, but I think that would be something cool if you really uh, keep your phone off the charger uh, during nighttime. But I know I'm making my phone on a charger, so I'm not really too worried about that. The Galaxy App Booster is what it says you hit this button and pretty much it will clear up your apps and free up ram so this is also within the settings i'm not going to talk about this right now because i'm going to close all the apps that i'm currently looking at but i it's just probably good to toggle once every while if your phone does feel a little bit sluggish now thermal guardian this is something we do not see in one ui 3.1 i thought this was actually pretty cool this allows you to adjust how hot or cold you want your phone to run. So you can allow your phone to run up to two degrees hotter or colder. And what, what you do is when you set it to two degrees warmer, that pretty much will allow your phone to heat up more before thermal throttling kicks in. But you know, heat is not good for your battery. So I probably wouldn't recommend making it hot all the time, but it's still cool that they allow uh, us to change that option. And finally with Memory Guardian, you can go and just see how much RAM the apps are using. This is kind of also in One UI 3.1. I think the only difference with this functionality in particular is that it gives us access to a cool graph which shows cached memory, um, available me memory on the past 30 days. So that's a little bit cool that we don't see in a normal One UI. Okay, now Home Up is another cool feature in GoodLock that allows you to customize the look of your home screen and to change a lot of things about your task launcher as well. So if we first go into the home screen option, what we can do is we can change the app size and the grid size, and we can adjust it to a little bit more than what the stock Samsung app gives us. So we can go up to seven by seven, and that's kind of convenient if you just need a little more space on your home screen or your app size screen. You can also turn on this thing called loop pages, which essentially gives you an endless loop in your app drawer. So when you get to the end of your app drawer, rather than having to stop and go back, it just loops back to the front. Now, I love this machine learning folder title suggestion. I saw that, I just laughed. If you need machine learning for suggesting your folder titles, select that. You can also do some backup restoring and you have this task changer. So this task changer used to be its own app but now it's part of this home collection app and allows you to change the look of your recents. So here's what my recents look like by default. Not that interesting, you know, just a normal Samsung One UI look. Now I can change it to different options. So I can do a list, a grid or stack. So the list is the default option. Now if I go to a grid, I have this kind of new look right here. And this allows me to see more apps running at once. And I kind of like this, honestly. I feel a little more productive with this viewpoint. I can also go to stacked, and I used to use this actually a lot, the stacked option, but it started to get a little bit annoying because you really can't see the apps and they all feel squished together. So I kind of prefer the uh, grid or the default list option, but either way, it's still a cool thing to customize, especially if you don't like the default look of your apps. 
And from this task changer, you can also customize other things like hiding the search bar if you don't want to see it, and also adjusting how you can swipe up from the bottom gestures and their sensitivity. So the last thing about Home Up is this share manager. I think the Android share menu is a disaster, and I swear every iteration of Android, the share menu gets worse. So at least the share manager allows you to select what apps you want to see when you share to other apps. It helps it clean up a little bit. But still, they, they someone needs to fix the Android share menu. It gets worse every iteration, and it's just a huge mess. But this is a nice sort of way for you to customize that a little bit. Now, let's take a look at QuickStar, another feature of GoodLock, and this allows you to adjust the icons that you see in your status bar. So you can turn off and on icons that you know you really don't need to see all the time. So, for example, Bluetooth. I know my Bluetooth is on 24/7. I don't really need to see a status of that, so I can turn Bluetooth off and save some space on my taskbar just to make it look a little bit cleaner, which is nice as well. Um, same thing with NFC. Also from this app, we can go and change the clock setting, so we can move the clock from the left to the right, where it used to be in Android, but now somehow end up on the left, or we can hide it all together, which is nice. And finally, we can take a look at my favorite feature of this app which is adjusting the way the quick panel operates. So you can turn this on and pretty much when you swipe down from your right, it'll open up the quick panel right in your notification tray. So by default, you see opens your notification tray, but when you turn on the quick panel toggle on, when you swipe down from the right, it's gonna open up your quick panels. And this is kind of, this reminds me of custom ROMs. It used to be this one in custom ROMs, uh, I think back on Paranoid Android. So it's kind of cool to have this option back. All right, now let's talk about one-handed operation. I used to use this app all the time on my Samsung Galaxy Note. I haven't used it as much on my S21 because it's smaller. With this app, you can pretty much control your whole entire phone with one hand. It gives you this, this bar on your left or right-hand side, wherever you choose. You can see that blue bar. With that blue bar, I can navigate back, I can navigate up. I can pretty much do all my navigational options just from that bar on the side and you can customize what each gesture does. So by default, I have just swiping to the right to close apps, swiping up to go to my recents, and swiping down to go back to home. Like I said, on a Galaxy Note, this was super helpful to have, especially on a big phone, so I definitely like having this. And you can customize a whole lot with this app, you know, the size of that, that uh, gesture point, uh, where it's at, location, and everything about it. So theme park, this is another feature a uh, part of good lock. And we already looked at the keyboard functionality earlier, but let's take a look at the notification functionality or the quick panel functionality. So with this, you can customize the look of your notification and quick panel. So this is pretty simple. We can go and change the color. So we can change it to, let's just say a white or more monochrome theme and go and change that. And when we put on a quick panel, now we'll have a white looking or gray looking theme, which I think it looks a little bit cleaner. Now just know this only applies to your quick panel, not anything else. So if you go into your settings, it's still gonna be the normal options, but still looks cleaner and I like that option. A very simple feature. Finally, let's talk about Samsung internet. Now this is awesome because number one, Samsung internet does a lot of things really well. For one, they have a really good dark theme. It works on almost any website, turns it to dark mode, and it just is flawless. I love it and I normally keep it like this. Number two, Samsung internet also allows you to have add blockers. So you can go into the options and go into add-ons and you can add in a uh, add blocker. I used to use this all the time before I set up my pie hole and it blocks most ads and does a pretty good job. Now, finally, Samsung internet has this thing called video assistant. Now, take this as you will, but for online videos, Video Assistant makes them really easy to watch and interact with. You can change the size of the video, the orientation, the height, and you can do this all within one hand. Like I said, Video Assistant, anyone who has a Samsung phone knows how amazing Video Assistant is for all types of videos you come across on the internet, wherever that may be. And it's definitely a handy feature that I would honestly miss not having it. Like I said, you can control all everything with one hand. It's, it's amazing. So guys, this has been a look at some of the best Samsung apps you can find within the Samsung Galaxy App Store. These are all awesome apps. I definitely recommend you give them a try. And tell me what you think in the comment below. 
If you want to see more videos like this, go and hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching and stay tuned for another galvanizing video. Thanks.